dear. It's so beautiful. How was the boat parade? Oh, Mother, <laughs> it was just beautiful as always. Father, I'm getting cold. I wish we lived in a warmer climate. Now, Mother Field, now. I told you we could live in a tree condo in San Diego where the good weather is instead of here in Newport Beach. Does she want to be near your brother and sister? Mother, when are Uncle Dylan and Nancy coming? Junior, now tell me about the boat parade. The pirate is with the polish and lovely as usual. The skiing Santa boat was funny. <laughs> the bright one with all the modern lights was really bright. <laughs> was the party boat there? Which one? Of course the party boat was there. When will we be able not to go on the party boat? <laughs> Never! <laughs>
cars, and Uncle Joel and I, we think that Santa just can't find you in this big old fir tree in the wilds of Newport Beach. Yeah, we think that he needs to step it up a bit and decorate this big old tree. You know, that's a fabulous idea. Well, with all the clothes and the decorations that the humans drape all over everything, <laughs> hey, maybe that's why Santa can't find us.
curtains after the fun of being together in family and in good company. Please, stay with us for the evening. Okay. Yeah. Can I get you some tea? Yes, please. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, you guys. I heard you and the little Wahimians are having a little Christmas celebration right. going on. So, you know, I brought a little, uh, some candy canes and a wiper. We're going to decorate them. Hey, I have to family celebration with Wahimians. Can I get some Sir? <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, a long time ago, in Hawaii, it's not cold like it is here in Newport. It's not snowing like other parts of the country. Instead, it's nice and warm. It's pleasant. The palm trees sway in the white sandy beaches. Tourists take pictures. No usual stuff. It's pretty amazing. And you know what? My grandmother taught me her favorite song a long time ago on the ukulele. You guys want to hear it? Yeah! Excellent. So if it's okay with you guys, I have a few presents for the girls. You guys might really like it. It really captures the Hawaiian Christmas spirit. Jewish people didn't have something like a nativity scene for Hanukkah. Really, why couldn't 
minor changes, we too could have family heirlooms and a beautiful scene to display. The word nativity could be replaced with destruction and rededication of the temple. Maybe not as serene as the manger with baby Jesus, but significant just the same. All told, the destruction and rededication of the temple scene would have to include armies, destruction, chaos, rubble, fallen trees, rabbis, and a menorah that's eternally burning bright. As the story goes, when the Jewish people returned to rebuild and rededicate their temple, there was only enough olive oil to have the menorah burn one night. But miraculously, it burned for eight days two nights, the exact amount of time it takes to press olive oil olive for new oil. I will admit it would be a little harder to pull off in front yards than a nativity scene. Most families just wouldn't have the storage for it. I'm not sure if my idea for the destruction and rededication of the temple scene will ever catch on like a nativity scene has. Maybe I'll just remain captivated each December by the many nativity scenes I've stopped to admire. I do love the symbolic miracles and the promise of love. I must not forget our own small miracles. As the real scene of our family's Hanukkah unfolds this year, the miracle that with four kids lighting a menorah, our house hasn't burned down. The promise that when I run short of oil while making latkes, there's always more. Already made at the store around the corner. And yes, of course, the promise of love. Wasn't that so beautiful? You know, I just remembered. I found this in the basement a while ago, and your mother's story reminded me of that. Oh, look. Oh. Ooh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's one of those candle opera things. No, it's a menorah. That's what the author Jill was talking about in her article. She and her family light one candle for each of their eight days of celebrating. how holidays are different to other people's eyes. Do you know, in Disneyland, there's a ride called Pirates of the Caribbean, and deep down inside the ride, there's a menorah hidden in the landscape. I'm just dying to go to this Disneyland place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's turn on the radio to see if there are any holiday shows on while we decorate. Yes, Father. And now, the continuation of A Child's Christmas in Wales. One Christmas was so much like another. In those years, around the sea town corner, now and now to all sound, except the distant voices I sometimes hear before sleep. I can never remember whether it snowed for six days and six nights when I was twelve, or whether it snowed for twelve days and twelve nights when I was six. All the Christmases roll down toward the two-town sea, like a cold and headlong moon, bundling down the sky that was our street. And they stop at the rim of the ice-edged, pitch-freezing waves. Years and years ago, when I was a boy, when there were wolves in Wales and birds that color red flannel petticoats whisked past the harp-shaped hills, when we sang and wallowed all night and day in caves that smelt like Sunday afternoons in dark glass house parlors, and we chased with the jawbones of deacons the English and the bears before the motor car before the wheel, before the Duchess faced horse, when we rode the dark <coughs> and happy hills bareback, it snowed and it snowed. There were the useful presents, engulfing muslin of the old coach days, and mittens made for giant sloths, blinding tam shanters like patchwork tea cozy, <coughs> and bunny suited busbies and balaclavas for victims of head shrieking pride. Once I had a little crocheted nose bag from an aunt, now alas, no longer whinnying with us, and picturesque books in which small boys, though worn with quot quotations not to, would skate on Farmer John's farm. And they did, and they drowned. And then there was a useless present. Once by mistake that no one could explain, a little hatch, hatchet, 
and a painting book in which I could make grass, the trees, the sea, and the animals, any color I please. And still the dazzling sky blue sheep are grazing in the red field under the pea green birds and a packet of fake candy cigarettes. You put one in your mouth and you stood at the corner of the street and you waited for hours for an old lady to scold you for smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and then with a smirk you ate it. <laughs> Mistletoe hung in all the front parlors. There was sherry and walnuts and bottled beer and crackers by the dessert spoons. Cats watched the fires and the high heat fire spat all ready for the chestnuts and the mulling pokers. Uncles sat trying their new cigars, holding them out judiciously at arm's length, returning them to their mouths, coughing, and then holding them out again as though waiting for the explosion. And some few small aunts, not wanted in the kitchen, or anywhere else for that matter, sat on the very edge of their chairs, poised and brittle, afraid to break like faded cups and saucers. For dinner, we had turkey and blazing pudding. Mothers, aunts, and sisters scuttled to and fro bearing tureens. Aunt Bessie, who had already been frightened twice by a clockwork mouse, whimpered at the sideboard and had some elderberry wine. The dog was sick. Auntie Dossie had to have three aspirins. I would blow up balloons to see how big they would blow up to. And when they burst, which they all did, the uncles jumped and rumbled. In the rich and heavy afternoon, the uncles breathing like dolphins and the snow descending, I would sit among festoons and Chinese lanterns and nibble dates. Always on Christmas night there was music. An uncle played the fiddle, a cousin sang Cherry Ripe, and another uncle sang Drake's Drum. It was very warm in the little house. Auntie Hannah, who had gone on to the parsnip wine, sang a song about bleeding hearts and death. Then everybody laughed, and then I went to bed. Looking through my bedroom window, out into the moonlight and the unending smoke-colored snow, I could see the lights in the window of all the other houses on our hill and hear the music rising from them up the long, steady, falling night. I turned the gas down, I got into bed, I said some words to the close and holy darkness, and then I slept. <laughs> you get this. It's time for some of this. Yay! I know you told us before, but tell us about your mama's feet. Well, every year, Las Posadas, the nine-day celebration, fills the hearts and minds of mice of Mexican descent here in Southern California. Posada means shelter, and the celebration recreates Mary and Joseph's search for shelter to give birth to the newborn baby Jesus. The celebration includes music, food, and dance. And it ends on Noche Buena, Christmas Eve. On Noche Buena, my mama would have us all wait until midnight. And then right at midnight, she would have us lull the newborn baby Jesus to sleep. She would have us join in on the fun of making tamales for the feast. She would make a special dough called masa. And she would wrap the masa in special fillings and corn husks before steaming them. She and her sisters made a variety because we had so many brothers and sisters and cousins. They would spend their time in the kitchen talking about their family tradition. Papa made the mole sauce. He said it was a secret, but we all knew the recipe. Still, we like to let him think that this was the most special in all of Mexico. The best part of it all, though, was getting to spend time with my entire family. Father, will you teach us this secret recipe? Of course. It's a family tradition, and now you girls are old enough to know about it. You're lucky, girls, because not only do you get my family's 
traditions, but she also hates her mommy's traditions. It's a duper! <laughs> 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 